How's it going, everybody? This is the Dirt Bike Channel podcast, and it's been a little while since I put out a podcast. I apologize for that. There's a lot of things going on in my world. Um, but I've got an exciting topic today. This podcast is brought to you by me. I don't have sponsors for this. And I'm not even looking for sponsors. I just, I just think I should talk about that every time I start one of these things. It just pops in my head. I can't really help this. I can't help what pops into my head. And whatever pops in my head is what will come out. I may be uploading this one to YouTube. YouTube, I'm looking at you guys right now, like looking at you right here. There's a little light on my camera and I always look at the light. It's not exactly into the lens. So I apologize for that if you're like, Kyle, where are you looking? I'm not looking at myself. I'm just looking at this little light that happens to be up on my camera. It's the easiest place to look. But this is the Dirt Bike Channel Podcast. Thank you so much for joining. You can get us anywhere, you know, subscribe on YouTube or not YouTube. Well, yeah, subscribe to us on YouTube, but also get us where you ever get your podcast, wherever you get your podcast, and everywhere, Apple, uh, Google, Spotify, all of those places. That's where to, that's where to find us. Today, I want to talk about a, a basically a topic that uh, was brought up to me by um, Shane. And Shane, you know who you are. One of the last times we were riding, and we were supposed to... Shane, I was supposed to go ride with you today, but I had to wake up at like 3 in the morning, and I'd been at Lake Powell for several days before that, and I could not get to sleep. I didn't get to sleep until 1 in the morning. Shane wanted to go do like a 75-mile loop, and I just didn't feel like when I woke up at 3 in the morning it was the day to do it. But Shane was talking to me one time about this idea of why forks don't deflect as much as they used to. And I've spent a bunch of time thinking about that, because I think it's an interesting it's an interesting topic. When you think back to the beginning of your kind of writing career, and tell me tell me if you're any different, you might think about how everything seemed to deflect more. Like your front end, your front tire, your front fork seemed like they deflected more, and they seemed like it was dancing around. At least for me, I think back and I'm like, everything seemed to be dancing around more than it is now, and it seemed to be harder to control my front end when I was first starting out in dirt bikes. And man, it, it's a real thing. Now, the longer I ride, it seems like the, mo- the less and less my forks deflect. It seems like the more control I have over the bikes. And it just, you know, I've, I've written down some things, some ideas that I have on this, because I think that a lot of people could probably relate to this whole concept of, hey, my forks don't deflect as much. And it's, I think it's too much of a cop-out to just go ahead and say, well, it's because the bikes have gotten better. I, w- I do think I'm, I'm going to cover that, but I think that the two things before that, I think there are three things to talk about here. Number one is your technique has gotten better, and I've got some bullet points to talk on that. Number two is that your tolerance level for an upset chassis has increased. And then third thing, I think, is that your suspension is probably better now than it used to be. But I think that that's a more of a distant thing. That's less of the reason why your suspension, uh, why your forks don't deflect. It's less of a reason because of, you know, better suspension and better components that it does play. It does play a role in it, but let me just get into it. That's uh, into this. So I think the biggest reason why, if you're experiencing this, this phenomenon of just, you feel like, Hey, I am so much more comfortable on the bike now and my forks deflect like far less than they used to, I think the biggest reason for that is that your technique on the bike has just flat out gotten better. And follow along with me on this. Um, one of the easiest things that I think you can, I can, I can attribute, attribute this to is that you see things more clearly as they're happening. You know, if you just have somebody who doesn't know anything about dirt biking and you show them like the speed that you're going, some of those people are going to think like, wow, this person is just flying down the trail. And, and in some ways you are, you know, as you ride more and more, your speeds slowly increase over time and you see things more clearly. And then that enables you to know what is going to happen. You've seen these things. You've seen these types of edges. You've seen these types of terrain features coming up on the trail so often that you just kind of know more what is going to happen. And knowing is half the battle. One of the biggest reasons why we say our fork is, quote, deflecting is because it's doing something that we don't anticipate it doing, you know? And if you're, if you're seeing the trail so much more clearly and you are processing this information so much better, that means you're able to anticipate 
what's going to happen on the front end. And if you can anticipate that, then you get to use it to your advantage and it's no longer a deflection. So like, imagine this one, imagine you're ripping along on a trail and then all of a sudden there's this rock that you can't really miss. Just the line choice that you've, that you've committed yourself into is pushing you over into this little kind of weird edge on the trail and you can't really miss it. Well, in the past, in your, you know, earlier in your riding career, you might like really tense up and not really know what to do and just kind of slam that thing, uh, you know, and it would just like kick you off balance or whatever, or you didn't even know you were going to hit it. And because of that, it kicks you off balance and you, the fork deflects. And, you know, if it's a really bad one, then maybe you crash. Um, if, if, as your, as your abilities increase, then you anticipate those things more and you're not, it's not going to catch you off guard. It allows you, you also can just shift your weight a little bit. So, so much about this is your body position on the bike. And if you see that obstacle and you're coming over into it and your line has been, you know, just forced into that, then you shift your weight a little bit and you, you allow yourself to just boom, bounce off of that thing and send you over into this other part of the trail, which you're now controlling. And so it's this idea of, you know, my technique has gotten so much better that I am seeing these things happen in the trail so much better and so much more clearly. And I understand what is going to happen on that. And that means that then I will shift my weight. I'll use it to my advantage. I'm going to use that to kind of send me over to this other section of the trail, which I know is going to happen. And I've just shifted my weight and I'm using that to my advantage. And I think that is such a huge part of this. I think that's such a huge component of this, of why we are not having this deflection phenomenon happening to us anymore is because what used to be a situation where we would deflect is now a situation that we're using to our advantage. And also line choice has just gotten better. Your line choice gets better and better over time. You look further and further ahead of you. You know what I mean? We talk about this a, a lot of the time on my channel is just keeping your eyes up and watching where you're going and trying to have you know, your eyes forward enough that you can anticipate things happening. Like for instance, it's, you know, and I've heard other trainers talk about this. Uh, Shane Watts, one of the uh, guys that I've ridden with and done training with, he's like, look, try to look ahead about seven to 10 feet for every gear that you're in. And this is, these are minimums. So if you're in first gear, you should be looking, you know, seven to 10 feet ahead of you. If you are in second gear, you should be looking 15 to 20 feet ahead of you uh, and so on and so forth. And this you know, the faster you go, the further ahead that you need to be looking. But as your, you know, ability improves, then your line choice gets better and you start looking further and further ahead of yourself. And that just allows you to kind of pick the better routes, have better anticipation of what's going to happen. And suddenly I just believe that so many of these things that used to deflect you um, are now not really even an issue anymore. And it's because your technique has gotten better. So that's the number one thing is that your technique has gotten better from my opinion, as I've thought about this over the last, you know, a couple of weeks. The second thing is I think that your tolerance level is higher. So when you first started, you know, to ride a bike, let's say this, cause this isn't to say that your front end never deflects. It just seems like it doesn't deflect as much or it doesn't deflect as badly. I think the second component of this, a component of this after your technique is just that your tolerance level for these types of situations has increased. Your tolerance level is higher than it used to be. I'll give you an example. When you first got your dirt bike, I, I think back to my 2009 uh, Yamaha YZ450F motocross bike. I think back to some times when I felt like I was really out of control and all of a sudden my front end is just boom, 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 boun bouncing all over and deflecting all, all over the place. And I think about how you know terrifying that was in the beginning. <laughs> Probably some of you guys can relate. Think about those same types of trails now and think about how less likely you'd be to you know feel uncomfortable maybe two years, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road. It's probably not going to be that big of an issue to you now at this point. And I think it's because you have all of this muscle memory. You have all of this other, you know, experience on you where you realize that, you know, this chassis on this dirt bike 
can handle a lot. You, th- you know, this chassis can handle so much more than what you thought it could five years ago, two years ago, 10 years ago, whatever, whatever it is. You've seen this a thousand times and you get more and more comfortable with the chassis kind of being out of sorts a little bit. So you're realizing that it doesn't, it isn't really out of sorts and you realize that it can get way more out of sort than this. And I can still stay up on the bike. You know, you, you used to be going like flying down a hill and you hit kind of a rough, a rough patch and your, your front end is bouncing all around and then you get tense and you get everything and you're, you know, you're hanging on the bars for dear life and your body is so tense and all of a sudden it gets kicked out just a little bit. And you think it's being kicked out at like 90 degrees or whatever, like the front end kind of deflects over a little bit and then the back end follows and, and you're just kind of like, what we call tank slapping down the trail or something like this, you realize after a while that if you're moving along, it's very tough to get the bike to be out of sorts, to have that chassis out of sorts enough that you're going to go down. And your, your position is so much better. You are able to react. We talked about your, you know, shifting your weight a little bit more. Now that your tolerance level has gotten up, you're shifting your weight more and you're realizing like, hey, this is not going to be a problem. This little thing where my front end kind of popped out, either I got surprised or not, but this isn't going to be an issue because my tolerance level is higher. You've ridden through so many, quote, near crashes or near misses that you're like, hey, your confidence level is just so much better. Tolerance level, confidence level, it's so much better. And you're just looser on the bike. You're looser and you're more free. You're more free flowing and light. You know, they talk about this a lot. And this is something I still struggle with. Like, hey, if you are, when you're hanging onto the bars on your hand grips, you don't want to be just like clamped down on the suckers. You want to pretend like you are holding eggs, like, you know, like chicken eggs or whatever. Uh, And yeah, you want to hold them firmly so that you don't drop them. But if you squeeze the chicken egg too hard, you're going to just break it right in your hand. That's not how we want to be holding onto the bike. We want to be holding on to it just loose enough that it can free flow. We're not gripping the bar too much. And the same thing happens with the rest of the bike. If you are so tense, like in the beginning, you're so nervous and you're riding so tense that it really makes it so that, you know, it's almost like these, these little deflections and things are worse because you're so tense and you're hanging on so tight. Now there are definitely times where you want to hang on to the bike really tight, you know, but other times it pays to just be a little bit looser, a little bit more flowing on the bike. And I think that helps your tolerance level for these deflections and these quote out of, you know, sorts. So you get the chassis out of sort. I think those things come down a little bit. And then third, and this is, this is a shorter podcast and that's okay. Uh, a lot, the podcasts don't have to be super long. Sometimes short is better. Um, the third thing that I mentioned is suspension is generally better now. So, and here's, here's the thing with this for many of us, if you're like me, and I know there's so many of you out there because I hear from you in email every single day for so many of us, we started on the wrong bikes. Okay. So we started on motocross bikes with motocross suspension. And that's because we went down to the dealer and you know, they were like, Hey, you want the biggest and the baddest thing? It's this thing. Eli Tomac wrote it this year and he won Supercross, So that's what you need. It's KX 450 F. You know, and then you're like, hey, Ken Roxon, he's the best rider in the world on Honda, and he's got a CRF 450R, and that's what you need. You know, Cooper Webb, last year, he was the champion on this uh, KTM 450SXF. That's what you need. <sighs> the truth is, that's not what any of us need, really, um, especially for doing trail riding. If you're just getting into mo- if you're just getting into dirt bikes at all, you do not need that freaking 450F. I just I you don't. By the time you by the time you know enough about dirt bikes, you're not going to be asking them which bike to ride. So all of these people who sell you on these freaking 450s, they all need to be whipped. Because by the time you decide that you need a 450, you already know in your head you think you need You know, you already go in there knowing I'm going to buy that bike. It's the times that you go, you don't know what you need. You know, when we're starting out and you go in and you're like, Hey, I think I want a dirt bike. What should I get? And those people that sell you this 450 motocross bike for everyone, I just think that's so freaking ridiculous. And it happens so often. So many of us started out on the wrong bikes. We started out on motocross bikes with motocross suspension, and it was just 
too stiff. It was way too stiff. The suspension couldn't get out of its own way. And so we're deflecting off everything because we're just like a pogo stick. You know, those, those bikes are just made to do like 90 miles an hour or come off like these huge drops, you, you know, like absorb the, absorb the hit from a 90 foot triple or whatever. And we're just not doing that. So your suspension now, because now you've actually migrated over to a bike that's more suited to you. You found a manufacturer that started to realize that most of us don't need suspension so that we can be on the next episode of, you know, crusty demons of dirt episode 17. We actually want suspension that moves out of the way. We want suspension that is working with us and we're not doing 90 foot gaps. We're not doing a hundred foot triples. And we're not blitzing through the whoops in fourth gear through supercross whoops. We're just out here riding and having a good time. And yeah, we'll kick it up into third gear, fourth gear every once in a while. But most of us are in first gear, second gear. And then every once in a while, we're getting into third gear and we're riding off road and we're riding trails and we need suspension that is much softer. So now you've kind of evolved a little bit. You've gotten some better bikes, some bikes that have actually softer suspension. And that's one of the other reasons why you're not deflecting as much is because you aren't riding a motocross bike anymore. Or maybe you've had your suspension custom tuned and there's a 99.9% chance that your tuner actually made the suspension softer. I mean, go ask them. You took your suspension in and you're like, hey, go ask them what you did, what they did. They most likely, they made it easier for the suspension to move they quickened up the suspension so it can move out of its own way better, so it can move more oil. And that's one of the big reasons why you may not be deflecting as much. you know. Um, and then lastly, another thing I think is maybe some of you have figured out that you don't need as much pressure in your tires. For me, on my front end, I'm running tubeless. And I'm running tubeless on my rear end too, most of the time. And that means that I can run down, run a lower pressure. So I'm only running like six to eight pounds of pressure in the front tire. When I was running my motocross bike with tubes in there, I had to run 15 pounds of pressure. I started out running 12, which is really hard, but then I was getting pinch flats. And so then I'm running 15 pounds of pressure in order to not get a pinch flat, which meant that it was pogo sticking off of everything. So please don't overpressure your tires. Now, if you ride in a sandy area where there's not a lot of sharp edges, you can get down. Maybe you might be able to get away with running 10 PSI in your tire or 12 PSI. Here in the Rocky Mountains where we have so much rocky terrain and there's so many hard, sharp edges, I've got to run 15 pounds in a tire if I'm going to run tubes, excuse me. And I don't like running tubes for that reason. But uh, if you are running 15 pounds of pressure, that's one of the reasons why your suspension might be deflecting is because you're running so much pressure in your tires that everything is just super stiff down there. So if you've got, if you can run a little bit lower pressure in your tires, if you can run a suspension that gets out of the way, then you're going to be better off. So those are my things. Our, why our forks are probably not deflecting as much now as they used to. Uh, your technique has gotten better. Your tolerance level is higher and your suspension is probably softer now. And those, all of those things combined are probably the biggest reasons why you are not having as many problems as you used to. And again, I think it mostly comes down to your technique. You're seeing things more clearly. You're anticipating what's going to happen. And you're using that anticipation to your advantage. You shift your weight on the bike better. And so much of this is about your body position and your line choice has just gotten so much better, so much more refined over time that what was a deflection two years ago is no longer a deflection now. It's just a, another part of the trail that you don't deflect off of because you you know, are doing that. Your tolerance level has become higher because you realize that the bike can accept so much more than you ever thought. These bikes have more potential than most of us will ever be able to even scratch the surface of. We're looser, more free on the bike. Um, and then a lot of us are just riding better bikes that have off-road suspension instead of really, really stiff motocross suspension uh, for crusty demons of dirt. And then maybe you're running less pressure in your tires. Those are my things why I think that our forks are not deflecting as much now as they used to. Hey, if you want to support Dirt Bike Channel, one of the best ways you can do that is you can use our links to Rocky Mountain ATV, Motorsport, and Amazon. If you go to my website up in the upper right-hand corner, there is a links section there, and you can go there. You can click on those links, and then you can just shop as normal. If you want to get 
a link that you can easily bookmark for your browser, just send me an email, kyle at dirtbikechannel.com. I can send you back a link for that. Super, super easy. Um, I think that's, oh yeah. If you want to get in on the Dirt Bike Channel sweepstakes that we do, pay attention because later in the year, coming in October slash November slash December of this year, we'll be doing another Dirt Bike Channel sweepstakes where we give away probably two or three bikes. I don't know, maybe even four this time. I just finally got all the bikes out of my hair from the early 2019 or 2020 DBC sweepstakes. We went down and delivered the bike in Page, Arizona, and the other two bikes went out to Oklahoma and Texas. So pay attention for those things um, as they come because it's a super way, super awesome way to support Dirt Bike Channel and get a dirt bike, possibly. So I think that is what I have for you. Hopefully you guys all have a fantastic week and weekend and leave a single track. Thank you.